Hello everyone, I'm Challenger Jakku and welcome back to the second part of this challenge, where we take on the remaining modern stages to see where it's possible to beat the game with the Super Mario mod. But before we begin, if you love Sonic content or challenge videos in general, and want to see more content like this on the channel, do me a favour and smash the subscribe button, like the video and hit that naughty bell. We are now on the road to 2000 subscribers by the end of the year, and any help to hit that goal is truly appreciated. Now I'm quickly going to go over the rules of this challenge, to set the groundwork of what is and what isn't allowed. First of all, the challenge begins in Green Hill, and is concluded upon the completion of Planet Wisp Act 2. Next, I am only allowed to use the features that are included within the mod itself, meaning I'm not allowed to cheat in any way, shape or form using an external cheat engine. We're only allowed to use the features included with the mod to clear the challenge. And finally, yes, this run will have glitches, and a lot of them at that. Now, without any further ado, let's jump straight in. Now, as we established in the previous episode, whilst the Act 1s of this game revolve around the classic gameplay, the Act 2 of Generations revolves around modern Sonic's playstyle, retaining the boost which has overall been refined from its 3D inception back on Unleashed. Meaning, to compensate for Sonic's speed, the levels had to be far longer, in order for them to last for more than a few seconds. Unfortunately for us, we aren't playing as Sonic with the boost, so just look for yourself. Do you see how tedious? this is going to be. One aspect that has really surprised me throughout this challenge was the surprising amount of interaction that Mario has with the various mechanics and stage gimmicks. Obviously Mario from 64 was never designed for long and linear stages, such as what we see in the boost games. However, he is far from a fish out of water when it comes to the obstacles ahead. Grind rails? Mario can grind along them. He's also capable of wall jumping meaning he's able to reach the higher pathways accessible to modern Sonic as well, and as mentioned last time he's even capable of utilising the light speed dash, something that I wish I knew way earlier as it would have helped with a certain stage in particular. After a literal minute and a half of doing nothing practically, we finally reached the first loop in the stage. And whilst they are far bigger than any of the loops in the classic variants, thanks to the dash pad Mario does have enough speed entering the first 2D section. We fail spectacularly upon using the rainbow rings to reach the spring, as Mario can't home an attack. Because of this he immediately falls down back to the lower path using the grind rails and dash pads to cover the various wooden loops in our way, taking us through to the cave section with a gigantic chopper set piece. Since Mario can't trick as he passes through the rainbow rings, he kind of just floats there in place before slamming into the 2D section hitting the next checkpoint. It's here where I kind of messed up. You see, just after the grind rail, there is a padded wall that we can use to wall jump up to the higher route. Now, Mario can jump up this without any issues. However, it's the wall jump from Mario 64, and as you'd know if you played the game, unlike modern Sonic or even future iterations of 3D Mario, 64 before Mario must jump the moment he touches the wall, or he will just bench right off it. He can't cling or even slide down the wall, and so because I wasn't expecting it, we instead fall down to the lower pathway. Thankfully, even this route was Mario friendly, allowing us to reach the final section of the stage. Now, if it seems like I'm skipping over a lot of details, I mean you're quite right in a sense. Literally, everything I don't mention is because Mario is simply running in a straight line for minutes on end, but with that, Act 2 is possible with Super Mario. Now, compared with Act 1 of Chemical Plant, not a lot has really changed in terms of the obstacles that we'll need to overcome. Even with the inclusion of the third dimension, whatever you do though during the start of the stage with the helix slopes, remain on the pathway you start on. I didn't actually know that you could even run along the others, as I usually just boost through this section as fast as possible. It's just that because of how steep some of those slopes are, you will get stuck, and by that point it's extremely awkward to jump back to the centre without falling into the bottomless pit. Mario can interact with the multiple sit lines though, so for the first three minutes of the stage, all we need to focus on is not dying of boredom, as we wait for the plumber to get his ass up the long winding roads. Look at this man go. In the 2D section we are aggressively forced back into the purple water, although I eventually figured out if you hold down the analog stick once Mario rises to the surface, it will jump out consistently, something that will certainly make the rest of the stage more manageable going forward. Whilst Mario is more than capable of clearing this next 2D section, once he has slowly pushed the block out of the way at least, the only thing really standing in our way from the water side is another ramp. We can wall jump up here, but because of the absurd height of the second wall, it can be tricky to even reach reach without hitting a triple jump. We did earn a checkpoint for our trouble just before the water slide, and thank goodness we did. For some strange reason, Mario is simply unaffected by the automated water, and so, even if he slides down, he doesn't have enough speed to be pushed into the skydiving section leading to a pretty hilarious fail. Now, you can clear this section as long as you jump at the very end of the water slide. Even at a snail's pace, the game's automation will kick in, sending Mario through to the next 2D section of the stage. At this point, we kind of got stuck as the next part of the stage was simply too high for Mario to reach himself. 
health, even with the wing cap. Any attempt to reach in the next platform results in Mario bouncing off the thing, and even the lower segment poses no luck either because of the godforsaken water. To even have a chance of clearing this stage, we need to backtrack all the way to the previous checkpoint, and from here the stage is elevated enough for us to actually reach the ledge as long as we use the bumper combination to clip out of bounds along with the wing cap. It can be awkward but as long as you don't descend too far down, you should be able to clear this section without too much of a hassle. Upon reaching the final segment with the rising water, we unfortunately take an L because of the stupid bad nicks. Even though Mario's controls return to normal despite being underwater, upon taking damage it reverted back to his swimming controls. So we were just kind of stuck there as the bandits continued to loop us, and even when we cleared it he somehow clicked through the ramp and remained stuck in the wall, until he eventually got out of bounds with the wing cap. The threat to the checkpoint was so intense due to the amount of hazards in the way, and the imposed time limit from being underwater in the first place. This section of the stage reminded me so much of Labyrinth Zone. In the end, thanks to the ever so useful crouch backflip, we were able to reach the final checkpoint. Now this final portion of the stage can pose a few issues. Usually you will normally home and attach in from each of the zip lines to reach the rail that will take you to the goal ring. Mario can't do that, so if you don't jump once you land back on the rail, he'll fall straight into the bottom's pit below. From here though, all we need to do is use the wing cart to glide over to the goal ring, making sure to not ram into the invisible walls in the process, clearing Act 2 of Chemical Plant. Now I've never really noticed just how open and long Act 2 of Sky Sanctuary actually is. Placing a much slower character into these stages really gives you a whole new perspective on the intricacies of the design itself, when you aren't constantly boosting through the things. But that said, the wing cap is a must if you want to stay along the top path and have an easier time. Even then, it's required upon reaching the 2D section, where we have to leap over the egg robo to reach a higher ledge. Watching Mario take an eternity to slide down the curved road on his belly, while Sonic can just boost through here in seconds is hilarious to watch I have to be honest. Upon reaching the inside of the sanctuary, the wing cap made it a breeze to glide over to the switch in order to ride the pulley. In an attempt to reach the rainbow ring on the other platform though, we unfortunately take an L thanks to Mario's stilted jump, taking the orb back to the outside. From this point, if you take the zip line ahead, this stage is unfortunately impossible to clear. Don't get me wrong, you can reach the final section with the collapsing tower, however like Axe 1, Mario doesn't have enough speed to reach the top before he falls off the foothold. So instead of taking the lower route, this is where the wing cap comes into play. Just as we did before, we need to glide over to the very top of the collapsing road, ground pounding onto the red spring to finish the stage. It is harder this time around, as we don't really have any visual indication until we get close enough for the level geometry to spawn in. My best advice is to just fly towards it over structures in the background, and eventually, the glassing road will spawn in. Don't descend too low, otherwise the spring will be impossible to reach. However, once we've hit the spring and ride the zip line to the end of the stage, we have completed Act 2 of Sky Sanctuary. The biggest issue with Speed Highway Act 2 is that there are a ton of set pieces throughout the stage that pretty much require the boost or quick step to clear, two abilities Mario obviously doesn't have. Another interesting piece of interaction that I discovered here is that if you land on a grind rail whilst gliding, the moment you leave the rail, Mario will gain a monumental amount of momentum and altitude, sending him flying. I thought we could maybe use this to our advantage to fly over the entire stage. Unfortunately, Mario flew so high that he managed to hit the death plane in the skybox, forcing a restart. Instead, we take the rail which puts us onto the building with the bombs. It turns out that Mario can actually dictate his position on the wall by moving the analog stick, making it possible to clear the set piece without the quick step. However, I pushed the stick too far to the right, and as a result Mario collided with the invisible wall, knocking us down to the path below. At first I thought we were pretty much a goner, as truth be told I never failed these sections before, hence I was completely oblivious to the existence of the lower path. You learn something new every day. The coconuts in the cop cars are relentless though, as all we did was fall down and they are already swarming our ass. Once we've taken them out, the trek to the next section was rather peaceful, albeit tedious. During the next wall running set piece, we were actually able to stick to the wall this time around, dashing up the highway to reach the next 2D section. And whilst this portion of the stage is self-explanatory, literally all we have to do is ground pound down the shaft, and then use the light speed dash across the trailer rings. I didn't know that Mario was actually capable of using the light speed dash at the time, so instead I stupidly used the wing cap to damage boost over the pit of spikes, which only made this take way longer to clear. We did get a little ballsy along the glass tightrope, as we spammed the long jump to clear this faster. It's entirely possible to accidentally alter Mario's trajectory, falling into the bottom's pit as a result. Thankfully, this didn't happen and we could clear the final set of platforms in the 2D section, riding the helicopter to the infamous set piece that pretty much defines Sonic Adventure, the dashing down the skyscraper section. Now usually, this set piece really isn't difficult to pass on your first try. The cop bandits can't damage you and the block obstacles are easy enough to dodge with the quick step. Mario can't do that though, so we just had to hope his slow turn is enough to evade the roadblocks, by ensuring our positioning is extremely precise. It got a slight bit worrying when Mario's 
sure enough took some damage, but we were able to recover reaching the final section of this act. The goal ring is just beyond the several highways we must cross, all the while avoiding the many cars wanting a squish plumber on their CV. The highway itself wasn't that hard to clear, but just getting onto the thing was an ordeal in of itself. To do so, we need to once again run across a building avoiding the bombs. This will push us onto a spring that will take us to the highway. Avoiding the bombs wasn't too difficult. However, for some reason upon holding right for a smidge too long than I should have, Mario got himself stuck inside an invisible wall. I have no idea how that happened exactly, and despite every attempt to get him out of the wall, he was pretty much trapped forcing us to restart this entire section again. In the end, I just used the wind cap to glide over, and this worked well enough. From this point, the only trouble we encountered was at the very end of the stage. Upon taking to the final highway, we were ambushed by more of the cop bandits taking quite a bit of damage, but managing to hang on with a single ring. To escape them for good, we needed to use the wing cap to enter the rainbow rings. With the things firmly on our arse, wanting nothing more but to incinerate the jump man for his many counts of vandalism. With that though, it's possible to beat Act 2 of Speed Highway. Act 2 of City Escape begins as you might expect. With Mario falling to the road below, snowboarding down the many twists and turns until we reach the first checkpoint at the end of the incline. Except, you'd be wrong. Unlike Sonic, Mario can't interact with either the skateboard in Act 1, or the snowboard here, forcing us to walk all the way down there. And yes, it's about as tedious as you might expect. Even using the ground rails and the cables above to speed this up, it still took us over two bloody minutes to reach the checkpoint. No wonder we barely see any humans anymore. Look at what they have to put up with in this world. From this point, the rest of City Escape Act 2 is rather generous when it comes to how easy of a journey it is for Mario, especially if you use the wing cap. Just whatever you do, make sure you stay on the upper path. If you fall down like I did on the first try, you might end up headbutting the wall when trying to grab the pulley, sending Mario onto the bottom's pit. The dreaded loop that takes us down the building thankfully has multiple dash pads, making it trivial for Mario to reach the 2D section. Once we somehow click through the floor of the loop here, the wing cap allowed us to glide over to the rest of the floating platforms, at least until the gun bag shot us out the sky, respawning at the previous checkpoint. One thing to note is that Mario can actually make use of the vaulting poles, allowing us to skip large portions of this final 2D section, as long as our timing is right, bringing us to the final section of the stage, a recreation of the iconic gun chase of Sonic Adventure 2, only this time, it's way harder. Now I kinda lied a bit before, the gun chase here does take your own momentum into account, kind of. If you go too slow, it's entirely possible for the gun truck to just get stuck around the corners. However, it can damage you as at random intervals it will gain a boost of speed, running over Mario in the process, which can virtually trap you under its massive hitbox. To escape, just crouch and oftentimes you'll slip right through. So the strategy is to stop at the corners where the gun truck will get stuck, and then use the wing cap to glide over to the next corner, rinse and repeat until we reach the next section. The gun truck also sports three buzz swords that it will use to damage you. They actually correspond to Mario's current position as the attack begins, meaning it's incredibly easy to loot them just by staying on one side of the road, as it will be the buzz saw on that side that it will use to strike you with. When we get off the roads and onto the buildings, it's a clear shot to the goal from here. Only, this is as far as I could go. You see, to avoid the gun truck, I obviously had to just stick to the side of the road, where it couldn't reach us. And whilst we were safe as long as we stayed here, once the gun truck passed us as we dropped down to the lower buildings, its hitbox pretty much softlocks us from here. No matter what I tried, I was simply unable to get over the truck, leading to Mario either getting stuck or taking damage from the wonky hitbox. So it isn't possible, right? Actually, it is possible. After a few hours of attempts, I still couldn't get the hang of it, it's then where I looked for outside help, and this is when a video by Brianu Sonic popped into my recommendations. Now I'm not going to show you the entire clip, but it turns out if you activate the wing cap before hitting the final straightaway, you can avoid the collision of the gun truck from the air, and since the final war run section is automated, this section is actually possible to beat with Mario. I'm just not able to replicate it unfortunately, so GG Brianu. The link is in the description below by the way if you want to check it out. Regardless, City Escape is possible to beat with Super Mario. With Act 2 taking more inspiration from the hero's level design, it's certainly one of the more open stages in the game for sure. There's a reason why so many fans point to this stage in particular when it pertains to peak boost design. For one, the 2D segments are minimal. We have so many alternate routes to take, each with their own gimmicks and ideas. Overall, it's just a really fun stage to dash through. In the end, I hoped that the open-ended nature of this stage would work to our advantage. And whilst it did in a sense, there was still a surprise amount of obstacles and unintended consequences for us to overcome. As always, the wing cap came in clutch, especially when it came to getting out of the 2D sections unscathed. The backflip allowed Mario to reach the higher levels fast enough without the footholds collapsing underneath him as well. Although we did almost fail because of these pillars that were continuously crush Mario, since he's too slow to actually get by them in one go. Luckily, we were able to collect the rings and just damage boost our way through, using the cannons to reach the next checkpoint, returning to the comforts of 3D. Identically to the effect ground rails have on Mario using the wing cap, and how upon leaving the rail he'll be granted an immense boost to his momentum, allowing him to take off. 
Das patch within the stage also have the same effect. I discovered this by complete accident as I was gliding into the rainbow ring that pushes into the dash pad along the path. And thanks to this, we were able to quite literally fly over the rest of this section with ease. Skipping the entire circuit, we would normally need to use the vehicle. It's so fun to fly over huge portions of the stage like this, like Tails' gameplay back in Adventure. Kind of makes me wish we had multiple playable characters again for all time's sake. So far, Seaside Elect 2 really hasn't posed any significant challenges that have impeded us in any way. That was until we reached the next section upon hitting the checkpoint. Because we flew over the triggers in the stage that are responsible for loading the geometry for the later sections, the level design has straight up disappeared. The collision is still there so you can stand on the platforms like the present, but without the actual textures being there, we're forced to pretty much fumble our way around and hope we can find the way forward. On this occasion, we couldn't, so instead I decided to backtrack back to a previous checkpoint, activating it. So when we respawn, or maybe the geometry further in the level can load in. And whilst this did work for the next section, the rest of the stage going forward was just filled with visual glitches and oddities. Take these next two sections as an example. From a first glance, it appears we've reached a dead end. The only thing ahead of us was a low res texture of the mountains in the background. It isn't until you actually walk towards it that you realise it doesn't have collision. So as soon as we pass through it, the door to the next part of the stage was behind the glitch the entire time. This also occurred in the 2D section as well, allowing us to clear it in the exact same way. The final section of Act 2 yet again revolves around circular boulders. Instead of chasing you this time around though, the journey across the track itself in a similar vein to the boulders in Crash 1. They can damage you and since Mario is extremely slow, we do have to time our dashes in between them carefully. As long as we take our time, it's entirely possible to reach the trick ramps unscathed, completing the final zone of the Dreamcast era with Super Mario. Unless you used the wing cap from the start, you really aren't getting that far in Act 2. Right off the bat we're faced with a homing attack chain up to a higher ledge, and since Mario can't homing attack, our only way forward is through the glide. Until we reach the 2D section of the art, the rest of this stage is barely worth mentioning honestly. Like Act 1, the platforming challenges present here were always awkward when playing with modern Sonic. Sonic in the boost game just isn't built for this sort of design, as he always felt rather clunky when you had to platform across bottomless pits and pools of lava. In contrast to Mario who was designed around more intricate platforming, I honestly had an easier time clearing this next section with a mod than I would in the base game. The only thing that really tripped us up was the fact that Mario somehow fell through solid collision, taking us back to the checkpoint. No idea what caused this exactly as this is the intended pathway, so on the next attempt we made sure to fly over this spot in particular reaching the 2D section. While being a relatively short segment, this was the portion of Crisis City we had the most trouble with. It all stems from the footholds that rise due to the fountain of lava pushing them upward. The path to the goal is underneath us in this case, so we need to lower the footholds by continuously stomping. This is problematic with Mario, as his ground pound has a significant delay in his animation. He pretty much floats in place before falling, unlike the snappy response of Sonic's own stomp. Because the lava will gradually push the foothold back up, and in some cases a sudden spurge can cause the thing to rise all the way to the ceiling, causing Mario to clip through upon being crushed. So you can see why this took us a few attempts to get right. The key to clearing this is all in your timing. To its credit, the footholds do have a clear telegraph to indicate when they will shoot up. When they start shaking violently, that sure cue to get out of there, so just wait until that animation plays out and when the platform falls back down, that's when you should spam the ground pound, giving you just enough time to reach the final section. Now the goal ring is literally on the other end of this straightaway. Usually with Sonic, you would have to use this quick step to avoid the lava and debris that the fire tornado is hurling towards you in a similar manner to the max B section of the original game. This had me slightly concerned, as Mario is nowhere near as capable as Sonic in that respect. Hilariously enough though, because Mario is so damn slow, the debris can't actually reach him. It only only goes a certain distance before despawning, and after a while the debris just starts coming entirely, making Act 2 possible to complete with Mario. Wow, just look at that package. Despite having 13 parts recorded for this one stage, Act 2 of Rootop Run is essentially a freebie, at least until the very end of the stage. We were forced to take a route I had no idea existed, as we did pass through the rainbow ring that would usually lead you to the upper section, but it undershot Mario completely, slamming into the building itself as a result. Aside from decapitating Mario's hat from his body because of the swinging axes, the straightaway with the spike barrels pose no real threats either. The cargo plane that's dropping them onto the road is actually moving forward ever so slightly, and since Mario is so slow as always, it'll get to the point where it just starts throwing them out completely as it despawns clearing the way forward. In the 2D section, I was determined to remain on the upper path, to the point where we actually pulled off a chain of wall jumps from the lower path all the way to the top, whilst avoiding the swinging axe. Naturally, my confidence was at an all-time high here, which continued to grow once we reached the clock tower section. I was curious to see if this was actually possible. Because of Mario's minuscule speed, I was certain that we'd just end up falling off entirely. But no, this entire section is automated. As long as we avoid the lasers, we can reach the rainbow ring and grind down the rails to reach the next section with ease. Upon trying his luck traversing the narrow alleyway, Mario ends up with a concussion after the many, many times he smacked his 
us head into the stores, reaching the final section of the stage. It's at this roadblock where I thought we might have failed the challenge. The final set piece with the laser robots on the straightaway takes place after we've crossed the bottomless pit. Now with Sonic, we can just hold an attack over there using the balloons and various springs. But because Mario can't do this, I thought maybe we'd just fly over there with the wing cap. It's just that the distance appears to be too far and too high for us to do so. We can't maintain, never mind gain that much altitude with minimal movements. So there is no way for Mario to even reach the pathway seemingly. Not even the spring to the left will help us as this will push us into the balloon until I try something else that is. By gliding into the spring on the left, once we regain control of Mario he will still be in his gliding animation and because of this we were able to gain the slightest bit of altitude, just enough to put us in line with the final spring, reaching solid ground. Even the long row crushes can't harm you if you jump on top of them once they come down. It turns out that they don't actually reach the roof of this arch, so Mario can't be crushed by doing so. As we reach the final checkpoint we're forced on a long track of road, all the whilst avoiding the mechs and lasers of the green robots. Unlike most other set pieces in the game, they do actually correspond with Mario's speed, so no matter how slow we actually go, they will sadly remain with us. There is a slight telegraph with their front lighting up before they launch the lasers, so as long as you keep an eye out, it's entirely possible to predict and evade them. The biggest problem in this section comes down to both the length of the road and the glitchy camera. No matter what, this without any speed hacks will take you around 3 minutes to reach the goal from the start, which is an incredibly long time especially when you mess up and have to restart the segment all over again. Towards the end of the road, for some reason the camera will be caught in an invisible piece of collision, which will send Mario to the other side of the road. From here we can't even hold up on the controller, as Mario will orientate himself into an entirely new direction. You just have to maintain the camera with the right stick and just slowly nudge Mario forward if that makes any sense. You'd figure that would be safe here, as we're on a blind spot on the bridge. Well, no. Whilst it's rare, the lasers can actually reach you here and if that happens you're most likely dying, as you can't see what's ahead of you, never mind where the rings are. Eventually we manage to brute force our way through which only made it scarier once we ended up taking damage. And with no rings left we had to dodge the last few lasers before the mechs eventually despawned, clearing the path to the go ring as we complete root up run the Super Mario. Now that was way too close for comfort. Planet Wisp Act 2 is the final roadblock in this challenge run, and I have to say I certainly prefer it to Act 1. Whilst the level remains somewhat similar, beginning around the natural wildlife of the planet before venturing through Eggman's industrial machinery, unlike Act 1 where it's just Wisp on the stage, Act 2 actually encourages you to scale the stage using modern Sonic's own abilities. Don't get me wrong, the Wisp are still present, this time in the form of the Rocket Wisp, they just aren't as intrusive as the first act. None of that really matters right now though, as our trolls begin right from the start. The first section of Act 2 is centred around platforming across the unsteady footholds, using the springs and pulleys to reach the intended path. Mario just has a tendency to bop his head off the walls, which pushes him back slightly, so you can imagine the amount of times we fell into a bottomless pit, or where he refuses to grab a hold of the pulley, falling through the footholds themselves, or just general mistakes all around that persisted to troll us. On the grind rails, Mario does slow down quite a bit. Not enough to fall off, mind, but sometimes you'll need to jump and that'll give him a boost of speed to push through. As always, the wing cap also gave us the ability to fly over most of the obstacles present in the 2D section, as we reach the industrial area upon activating the rocket whiz. The next segment is an absolute death magnet for Mario. From tight platforming in narrow sections, the array of missiles and other death traps, it can be difficult enough with modern Sonic, so as you can imagine, this can pose quite a challenge. There are sections of this stage that do feel like something out of a Mario game though, such as the vertical shaft with the countless missiles. Thanks to the enclosed space, we were able to wall jump. It's just that Mario couldn't get enough height and thus we took a hit as a result. Instead, by using the crouch backflip, we were able to reach the rising platform, giving us the break we needed to reach the next Wisp Castle and ascend to the higher section of the stage. Or not. I didn't know this at the time, but apparently you need to mash the Y button and not hold it. Because of this, we had to take the lower route, gliding over the bus source to reach another whisk capsule, this time learning from our mistake and successfully shooting up to the next section. Towards the end, there are these minecarts that we can ride along with the press the X button. Mario can't activate them just like modern Sonic, it's just way harder to get onto the things without the homing attack. I'd be lying if I said the wing cap didn't help out tremendously here, as we were able to glide over the path of the minecart, saving us a ton of hassle that we would otherwise have had to deal with, with traversing through the lower pathway. As we reach the final portion of the stage, we need to use the rocket whisk to tunnel our way through the class instructions before we crush. This might just be my inexperience with the game in general, but I didn't actually realise we were on the timer here until the final barricade was right on top of Mario's head. Regardless, we were able to escape before the barricade entirely crushed us, reaching the goal ring and completing Planet Wiss Act 2 with Super Mario, concluding this challenge with the knowledge that yes, it is possible to beat Sonic Generations using the Super Mario 64 mod. Well, the stage is at the very least. 
And with that, we've reached the conclusion of the challenge. As I said last time in the future, I may come back to tackle the boss fights, as upon further inspection, they do appear possible to complete. They were just never really my priority when it came to this challenge, as I was only curious of whether Mario can actually beat the stage of themselves, so I'm comfortable with moving on with a well-deserved win on our resume. With that said, join us again next time when we return to the No Ring Challenge series, as we take on Sonic Heroes to see where it's possible to beat the game without collecting any rings. No, I know what you're gonna say. Am I contradicting what I literally just said wow. in my channel up there? Well, yes. I just didn't realise at the time how massive this project was going to be until they kept evolving as we progressed through the game. I expected this to be something I could get out within a week. With how short Generations is as a game in general, that doesn't mean we won't be continuing on with fan requested challenges though. Once Heroes is out of the way, we will be tackling them before I even dare to think about Shadow the Hedgehog. So please don't worry, they're coming. But with that said, I've taken up enough of your time. So take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye bye for now.